lunging into tackles with blatant <laughs> disregard to now the defense is quite tragic. <laughs> Speaking of tragic, Kev, Fiorentina and Inter. <laughs> Happy Thursday, guys, and happy 2024. We are back with stoppage time. We took a, a good month off winter break, like a lot of the teams uh, in Europe and a lot of leagues in Europe, and some of them are still uh, waiting to get back into play, playing their cup games. But uh, we've got to get this show going and stoppage time. We've got some games from uh, around Europe. We're going to three leagues. We're going to do Bundesliga. We're going to do the Stuttgart uh, Red Bull Leipzig game. Then we're going to go to Spain and, and tackle the Villarreal Barcelona game. And then we're going to finish it off in Italy as league leaders Inter Milan uh, travel to Fiorentina to take on uh, them. Three very good games. And with me, of course, from uh, wagertalk.com, Nick Borman, Kevin Dolan, and Pablos Lagaretos. And guys, we're going to have some promos. Uh, and we'll talk about them during the uh, second games. But let's kick this off because we got a lot to cover here. And Kev, I'm going to go to you first. Uh, Stuttgart, Red Bull, Leipzig, plus 166 on Stuttgart. Uh, the draws plus 273. Leipzig, plus 148. A lot of plus money across the board. And these are teams separated by a point in third and fourth. Stuttgart third with 34. Leipzig with 33. And... Uh, these teams met uh, back in August, 5-1 in the reverse fixture at, uh, at Leipzig. Give me your thoughts on this game. Well, you know, obviously, uh, Garassi still missing for this game for Stuttgart, Guinea advancing through the last 16, the African Cup of Nations. So that's obviously a huge blow. You know, he's contributed an absolutely massive 45% of all of their goals this season. That's the highest contribution rate you know, in the Bundesliga this season, and they've lost two on the bounce with him as well in the start lineup. So, you know, you know the, the the odds are obviously tight for a reason because of that. Leipzig just about deserve favourites here, you would say. Um, but obviously, taking into account their own patchy form late as well, no win across any of the last three starts. Um, in terms of recent head to heads, Leipzig has lost none of the last five visits against Stuttgart in this venue. They won three of those last four outright as well. And as you mentioned, they absolutely destroyed Stuttgart the last time they faced each other back in August 5-1. So, yeah, I mean, if I had to do this from a side, um, probably just about lean Leipzig. Um, but I, I like the over here. You know, I know Garassi's obviously out for Stuttgart here, but only Bayern Munich have created more chances at home this season than Stuttgart have. You know, they've been posting up some insanely high XG numbers over in the MHP arena this season. And both of those, both of these teams, as you say, you know, rank one and two in number of penalties awarded this season as well. So that's another factor potentially in our favour here as well. Just the amount of penalty chances they're getting. So, yeah, lean towards the over here. You could take a penalty prop if you like as well. Um, but, yeah, over three goals, I think the worst case scenario, although you know, obviously it could be a loser, but I think the worst case scenario is a push. Um, but I think we get the win here over three goals. All right, uh, Kev. You know, I, I I tend to agree with you on on this one, and even with Garazzi's uh, still at the uh, Afcon, um, and he is a big miss for the team. Uh, Seventeen goals through fourteen, uh, through four, four, I think it's fourteen games for him, and he's only five back of of Harry Kane, who's played eighteen games. Uh, of course, um, it, it's uh, we'll see what happens, but that. Uh, I'm sure memories uh, memories of that 5-1 are still in the back of Stuttgart's head. And, and they've been good at home this season. 7-1-1 one, and one at home. Uh, I'm going to go to you next, Nick. And I have to think, other than the, the two teams, that's that's the third best home record. Obviously, Bayern played um, Bayern played yesterday. They did get the did get the win, but uh, it's it's Bayer Leverkusen who who um, have quite uh, have, have the best record right now in the Bundesliga. Have not lost a game all season uh, through, uh, across all competitions as well. Too, we'll 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 get them on a future show, I am sure. But uh, give me your thoughts on this one, Nick. You know, when you talk about <clears throat> absences on the team, obviously, yes, we, we're, we're hitting on a big one with Stuttgart, but, you know, the odds makers aren't dumb and they adjust these lines based on what the public perception of that loss will be. So I wonder if he is playing this match, if this line is, I don't know, 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents different, maybe 
it's a, it's a draw no bet, basically a pick 'em price right now on the handicap line. Maybe it's minus a quarter of a goal to to Stucker at home, or, or or has nothing been adjusted? So you're you're trying to figure that out, right? Because player effect can affect the line, whether it's right or wrong, and you try to then see where the value is based on that. I think on the draw no bet line, I actually like Stuckert, even with loss of him, because I feel like the line probably has been adjusted a little bit, and getting getting a, a draw no bet on them at basically even money, I think is okay here. I kind of mentioned how good they've been <laughs> at home. It's re- it's ridiculous. Uh, there's only one match this season where they haven't scored at least two goals, and that was Leverkusen, who they still had played to a 1-1 draw with. So best team, as you mentioned, Carm, in the Bundesliga, and they still managed to draw. Averaged, uh, actually created over two expected goals in that match. And in every home game this year, they've averaged, uh, they've ac- actually gotten over two expected goals per match, averaging 3.2 at home. Kevin mentioned how good they've been at chances created there. It's very, very impressive. Uh, you know, Leipzig, quality side, no doubt. And it's not going to be an easy match. And it ultimately could be very close. I wouldn't be surprised if Leipzig did win. But I like Stuckert here because Leipzig's form, you know, on the road this year has been pretty suspect. I mean, they have a couple losses to Mainz and, and Wolfsburg. They had a draw with Werner Bremen. Um, you know, they've proven they can lay some duds, if you will, away from home. They did embarrass uh, Stuckert 5-1. to one. You mentioned that, Carm, back in August. So long time ago, hard to even, you know, compare the clubs at that point. Maybe, if anything, that just actually lights a a bigger fire uh, in a revenge type of a situation. But I'll say this. If Stuckert was laying anything on a handicap line, I wouldn't wouldn't lay it. But the fact that it's a a draw-no bet, I'm leaning towards them as the side I would bet here. And, you know, they've they've done well at home. We mentioned that. I mean, they beat Dortmund 2-1. I mentioned the, the, the Leverkusen result they got. So against big clubs, they are still getting results at home. I think the line has been moved a little uh, based on the absence that, that they're missing. So I don't think it's a huge factor in the current number. So I see a little value on soccer. It's not a favorite play here for me, um, but I do think that would be the right side to take. All right, Nick Borman. And we're going to have a great deal uh, uh, for people looking to take advantage of the MLS, uh, which is uh, about to kick off soon uh, in the coming month uh, for Nick Borman as well too. Pablo's, uh, the restart since the winter break uh, in the Bundesliga for these two teams hasn't gone uh, well for either one. Uh, Stuttgart lose both uh, both away contests or they're back home where they like to be and like to win. But Leipzig, two uh, straight home defeats and uh, they hit the road. What are your thoughts on this game? Um, it's a strange game because, you know, Stuttgart, as you guys said, they're missing uh, not only Girassi, but they're missing Silas, and um, who is, you know, one of the wingers who is, um, you know, he's, he's really good at what he does. And they're also missing Karazor, who is one of their midfielders, who, yes, he's a holding midfielder, but he often, you know, moves up front. He has a couple of uh, assists so far. He, he tests his shot. So, um, but then, you know, Stuttgart were missing Girassi earlier in the season, and they have Denis Dav, who is a Turkish guy, who's a really good um, substitute, if you will. And they they even tried, uh, you know, playing both of them at the at the front. But I think their goal scoring uh, opportunities will not, um, you know, will not suffer uh, because of the absence of Girassi. Uh, but Red Bull Leipzig also have a, a key absence of their own because uh, Xavi Simons is suspended, and he's been instrumental for the side. However, they do get Danny Olmo back from an injury. And, you know, prior to his injury, he was really, you know, he was playing really well and helping Red Bull Leipzig really well. So I think that hole uh, in the creative midfield will be filled by Danny Olmo. So, um, uh, you know, normally I would go with goals here, um, considering the fact that uh, Leipzig, you know, whenever they meet the, you know, the strong teams, uh, they produce goal fests. Um, against Leverkusen, they lost 3-2, uh, to two, both home and away. Uh, against um, Manchester City, they lost uh, three to two and three to one. Against Dor- Dortmund, they beat them three to two. So they're always revolving around that two two three one three two. So they're always playing for overs whenever they they meet you know teams who can actually uh, attack. Now, um, what really put me off the over um, the the over three and a half goals or the both teams scoring over two and a half goals is the fact that um, whenever these two meet in the head to head, they they don't produce a lot of goals. And in fact, Stuttgart had, have never beaten Leipzig as host. They have three losses and two draws. And four of those five matches were unders. 
Uh, but, you know, take those results with, with a grain of salt because it's from past seasons where Stuttgart were struggling. You know, they were down there at the, at the depths of the Bundesliga trying to avoid relegation. But this season they've been, they flipped the script. They've been playing really well. And I think they've learned to live with the absence of Girassi. So uh, Leipzig, uh, they're still missing um, Willy Orban, who is, um, you know, their, their, their best defender, probably the best center back. And uh, they're also missing, um, I think they're missing their goalkeeper. So their defense is not that good away from home. They've kept, they rarely keep clean seats away from home. They've only kept one like uh, um, against uh, Gladbach, I believe, and one against Union Berlin. So uh, I do expect them to concede here. Um, this is a tricky match, to be honest, but I'm going to take Stuttgart over one and a half team total plus 105. I think they can score twice. Um, maybe Leipzig get on the score sheet, but again, you know, we saw a lot of unders as, um, you know, the Bundesliga was in the winter break and uh, players are starting to, uh, you know, get back into action. So we saw a lot of unders. I don't want to complicate it with the over, you know, uh, the, the match total. I'm just going to take Stuttgart over one and a half in total plus 105 and uh, maybe throw some beer money in the 3-2 three, two, and 2-3 two, correct scores for either side. Hey, Paolo Zagatos. And, and Paolo, I agree with you. It's been a, a a slow restart for for some of these teams. Just look at, uh, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> just look at uh, Bayern Munich, uh, two home games, a one nil defeat uh, to Werder Bremen, and then a one nil victory uh, um, yesterday. Uh, they're not clicking on all cylinders as of yet, and uh, they need to because Bayer Leverkusen uh, are not taking any breaks. But those teams will meet uh, in the uh, in February, so I'm looking forward to that one. And you sp and you spoke about uh, Turkish players. One I'm happy with, uh, who's playing for Juventus, Yildiz, 18 years old. This guy is a Turkish delight, uh, Pavlos. Uh, this kid mm -hmm. has a lot of talent. All right, uh, Kev, we're going to switch because you're the king of Spain, Kev. So how can we not have one of the featured matches of the weekend in La Liga, Barcelona and Villarreal? Barcelona. A prohibitive favorite, minus 310, 713, plus 713 on Villarreal if you want to take a flyer on that one. The draw, plus 496. Kev, Barcelona, they just seem to be moving along there. They, they don't seem to be gaining on Girona and, and Real Madrid. Their only two home losses this year were to Girona and Madrid. They've won uh, all other eight fixtures. What do you see in this one? Yeah, they do seem to have turned a bit of a corner um, of late, you would say. You know, three straight wins now for Barcelona in the league for the first time since late September, I believe. So, you know, long overdue for a club of Barcelona's stature. Uh, you know, on the other side, look, we have a Villarreal side here that they have been incredibly poor all season. I'm actually really surprised how poor they've been. You know, only Almeria... And Granada, the two bottom sides of the league, have amassed more outright defeats this season than Villarreal have. And their defence has been absolutely atrocious as well. You know, joint second worst in the league overall, third worst away from home. So, while I can't go and lay minus 300 or whatever the number is here on Barcelona get to get the outright win, I do find it highly doubtful that Villarreal, given the way they're playing, will be able to get anything from this game as... You know, I have been semi-impressed. I mean, the title race looks like a long shot now for Barcelona, but they, they definitely seem to be playing a little bit better over the last few games. Um, that said, I'm going to go back to a market which has actually treated me pretty well across recent months in soccer. That's the total goals bans. We've mentioned this in this show before. I think Pavlos plays a good, a good bit in this market as well. And I'm going to look at the three and four goals uh, total goals banned at plus 135 in this one. We saw Villarreal crash out of the Cop del Rey two weeks ago against third-tier side Unionistas, but uh, that was probably a blessing in disguise for them. You know, they needed to be kicked out of that competition. They looked, you know, a lot more organised defensively, you'd say, against Mallorca after that full week's worth of rest. Um, as a result, they allowed just 0.44 XG against Mallorca in that game with Mallorca's sole goal. Coming, you know, in injury time as well to, to, you know, salvage that draw. And Villarreal played the majority of that second half with just 10 men as well. So this is a team, you know, now that they've got all the distractions out the way, they need to focus purely on survival at this point. You could, you know, you could see that shift 
in terms of that mindset in the Mallorca game as well. They sit just five points clear of the drop zone right now. So the, there's really not much margin for error. And, you know, it's been the defence that has got them in this bind, you would say, over the season so far. Um, that said, even though I expect them to be more focused on defence, you know, Barcelona has netted nine goals across the last three starts. They put four past Villarreal the last time these two teams met as well. So I don't want to go and lay straight under here. Because I wouldn't feel, you know, comfortable doing that against Barcelona. But, you know, three of the last four games that Barcelona has hosted Villarreal. I know the ground's different, whatever, from previous seasons. But, you know, whenever Barcelona's hosted Villarreal, they've tended to finish in this three to four goals bracket. Like I said, three of the last four have finished with either three or four goals. And a plus 135. And obviously, if you're feeling a bit more cautious, you may have to go for the three to five goals band. That's minus 135. But for me, getting a nice plus money, plus 135, three to four goals, I think that's a fair price here. Um, as I think we'll get we'll get in that goals bands here. So, uh, yeah, three to four goals, Villarreal Barcelona on Saturday for me. All right. That's an interesting one, but uh, one that I think you have hit uh, numerous times on, uh, on stoppage time. So um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Nick, uh, he talked about Villarreal's away form at uh, two, three, and five on the season right now. Ten games, you know, scored by a two to one margin. Um, give me your thoughts on this one. <laughs> yeah, poor Villarreal here getting uh, getting blasted upon for their their poor defense, but rightfully so. But as Kevin alluded to there at the end, <clears throat> Barcelona's defense is not something you want to get behind uh, right now. He mentioned the amount of goals that they've allowed in the last, what, three matches, I think you say, Kevin. So you look even further back and you look at all the competitions, you know, they've conceded in 10 of their last 11 with seven of those being multiple goals. Uh, obviously, they, they played on Wednesday this week. They lost in extra time uh, to Bilbao, so they're out of the Copa. And while I bring that up is I think it's just another important factor. You know, it's a short rest. It was extra time. So it was even a longer match. Uh, and it was a pretty physical match in, in, in there. And I think, you know, that only makes defensive legs, especially more likely to be a little tired here. And I just simply don't trust their defense at all right now. And you add that factor and it just goes right on top of it. You look at Villarreal's results. They are the number one team in the in La Liga in both both teams to score record 17 and four. I think only Brighton in all of the big five leagues has a high or a better cashing both teams to score record. And then they are 13 and six with two pushes uh, in the over under market to whatever their particular match was set at for that game. So they clearly are in matches and a lot of it has to do with their defense uh, that, you know, we're seeing goals in. So Kevin alluding to the three to four goal band makes a lot of sense. I'm kind of in that same area. Uh, I can't really pick a winner. I don't feel comfortable with the, the laying anything on Barcelona because of their defense. The line actually opened uh, minus 1.75. It is now minus 1.5. So it's clearly some money came in on that, on Villarreal side, on that Asian handicap. But I think we're going to see goals. I think both teams are going to get on the, mar uh, on the score sheet. Uh, Villarreal, for as bad as they've been defensively, do tend to score more often than not. And Barcelona, like I said, just are not holding anybody off the sheet so the both teams to score and over two and a half market remember this total set at three and a half so by adding both teams to score to this and taking over two and a half as a combo we can buy that down basically a full goal uh it's minus 130 is, is the price i'm seeing right now i think it's still pretty solid there and you know that brings a lot of the obviously score lines of, of two one either way or or three one uh into play and all of those cash with kevin too so i kind of agree with kevin uh, i'm just doing it a little bit differently but i do expect to see some uh see some goals here all right, Nick Borman. Nick, uh, quickly, um, I have to mention it because it, I think it's, it is a great deal. We all know uh, throughout the year you uh, uh, release soccer, uh, sorry, you release golf plays and have done absolutely fantastic with some outright winners, some matchups. But the MLS, only Lino Messi has dominated the MLS more <laughs> than you have uh, last season. And tell us about the deal. Yeah, thanks, Carm. Certainly, MLS has been my best soccer league, no no doubt about it. Five straight winning years, going for six in a row, excited about that. Golf last year, 13 outright winners, 133 units gained, uh, just, just incredible. It'll be hard to follow up, but 
coming off incredible years, hopefully hoping to see that long-term consistency. Right now, both are available as a combo for half off, basically. Um, $349, you can get all the ML season and then all of the golf season through the Tour Championship, which is uh, first week of September. All of it combined for $349. Normally, that's priced at $698, so it's literally half off. Uh, great deal, and I'm very excited, very confident that we'll deliver good results again this year in the MLS as well. All right, and for those of you guys out there watching, MLS, uh, this isn't a short season. MLS starts in February and finishes with the MLS Cup. I think it's December the 7th this year. There is plenty yep. of action in North America that you'll be able to get through this deal with Nick. Pablos, I'm going to go to you for the final word on this Barcelona-Villarreal game. Um, I do see goals here. I completely agree with uh, what you guys said about Barcelona's defense being quite tragic, to be honest, uh, because, you know, they used to be really good defensively under Xavi, but, uh, you know, this season they, they've kept just three clean seats uh, in their last 16 matches across all competitions, and they keep conceding goals against the unlikeliest of opponents. As you guys said, they, com they conceded uh, a goal to a third division side in the Copa del Rey a couple of rounds ago. Uh, in the previous round, uh, the, you know, prior to that, they considered two more goals against a third division side. Um, um, you know, they, they only kept clean seats against Osasuna and, oddly enough, uh, against Atletico Madrid. But pretty much everyone scores against them. Almeria scored t twice against them, uh, you know, when they play at home. You know, there is a big issue for um, for Barcelona, but the fact that they're renovating their uh, Camp Nou, their, their regular stadium, you know, which is a huge stadium, like 80,000, 90,000 uh, capacity, and they now have to play in a much smaller stadium, and that kind of ruins the flow, right? Because um, up until last season, you had 90,000 people cheering for you in the stands, and, you know, no, it's not only that you get boosted by that as a Barcelona player, but it's also intimidating for the opposing sides. But now I think it's like, what, 20, 25,000 people tops. Uh, and I might be over exaggerating uh, the capacity of their current stadium. So, you know, the, the, that big atmosphere where everybody was uh, intimidated is gone for Barcelona. So that's why, that's one of the reasons why we see many teams uh, scoring against them. Now, Villarreal, uh, they've scored in 13 of 16 away matches across all competitions um this season and uh but they kept just three clean seats in those 16 matches uh they are all on the road they're nothing special they're nothing like the the team that made us a lot of money a couple of, uh, a couple of seasons ago uh, a lot of changes in their roster and their overall inability to you know beat the big ones um just has them pinned you know at the um, bottom half of the league table just five points above the relegation zone I just don't think Villarreal have what it takes to take a result here. Yes, it's true that Barcelona are um, tired after um, extra, you know, extra tiredness about the, the Copa del Rey uh, yesterday. But um, I think they're gonna win. They're gonna flip the script because, you know, they're right now they're sitting at the third spot of the of the La Liga. Uh, the title is not entirely out of the question. They're eight points behind Girona uh, with a match in hand. So if they win here, they're gonna move to seven point to um, five points behind. So. Uh, I think Barcelona need to uh, drop uh, whatever you know um, feelings they have from that lost um, Copa del Rey uh, quarterfinal to to Bilbao, and they need to flip the script because uh, this might turn out to be a very catastrophic season for them. So uh, I like Barcelona to win and both teams to score plus one twenty five. Um, I think that's a fair price because, um, you know, as you heard the guys before, they, they expect goals as well. Uh, I just don't think Villarreal have what it takes. And after all, you know, at the start of the season, Villarreal lost to Barcelona at home by 3-4. to four. So I expect something similar today, uh, like a 3-1 Barcelona win, 3-2, 2-1, something like that. But I definitely see Villarreal scoring here, but Barcelona absolutely need this win. So give Barcelona to win and uh, both teams to score at plus 125. All right, I like it. And one thing we can always count on on stoppage time is a quote from uh, Pavlos. Uh, everything from lunging into tackles with blatant <laughs> disregard to now the defense is quite tragic. <laughs> Speaking of tragic, Kev, Fiorentina and Inter. We're going to Italy for this one. Fiorentina plus 306 at home. The draw is plus 260 for, for Inter Milan. Sorry, Inter Milan. Yeah, Inter Milan. I was going to say Inter Miami. Minus 113, and 
I watch these Inter Milan games, and they keep finding a way to pull out these games late. It is, for me, quite tragic, because I want them to drop <laughs> some points uh, for my beloved Juve team, who sit in second a couple points back. But uh, the Italian Derby is coming up soon uh, in, in, in Milan between these two. But uh, give me your thoughts on this game. I'm going to keep this one simple, Carmen. I'm going to come right back and look at the total goals bands again um, because I like it in this one as well. You know, Inter on the road this season, you know, you take out that 5 1 win against Monza two weeks ago. You know, there were three penalties scored in that game. It really was an outlier in terms of results. And, you know, all of their other road games in Serie A this year, going all the way back to August, um, you know, six of those nine road matches are Inter score exactly one or two goals. And when you filter that out for top six teams they faced, that becomes three from three. So, you know, by and large, you know, bar the referee having some kind of penalty fest, Inter have been one of the most consistent teams in the league. It's that kind of old Italian style. You know, they just get the job done, get out of town with three points. Um, and especially against teams at the upper echelon in Serie A as well, you know, just in terms of how, you know, they manage the game. Um, and they face a team here on Sunday in Fiorentina that you have to go all the way back to early November now to find the last time this team was denied in front of goals at home. So these two teams have been, you know, fairly consistent this season. Three of Fiorentina's last four games at home have seen them shut the opponent out completely. And Inter haven't allowed more than a single goal away from home all season. And in fact, six of those 10 road games for Inter were complete shutouts as well. So a lean Inter here from a side perspective. But, you know, like I said, just going back to that total goals bans again, you know, we're getting the 3-0 there because I like the total goals bans two to three goals. So we're getting 3-0, 1-1, 2-1 for either side here. Um, that just looks like a far more appealing proposition for me, you know, especially a plus money as well. So, yeah, total goals, 2 or 3, a plus 105. You know, I think we see this one land right in the money on Sunday. All right. Uh... 2-1, 3-1, Fiorentina. That kind of sounds good to me. Nick... <laughs> Uh, the cool. Fiorentina team are, are having a great season, um, but uh, I, they've all, this is only their second game at home against a top four side. Their first one, I think, as Kevin mentioned, was back in November where, where uh, Juventus came to town and left with a 1-0 victory. Uh, does Inter do the same thing here? What are your thoughts? Coming from a Juve fan, of course, you are not uh, rooting for an Inter Milan win here, which <laughs> I think is probably the way to go. Uh, minus 110 really is uh, is a very good price to get behind one of the best teams right now in Europe. Um, they've just looked incredible no matter who they're going up against. Uh, I did ride them in both Super Cup matches they played, which they delivered wins in. Uh, Napoli game maybe was aided by the red red car, but either way, they got it done. You could argue though that is a negative. A couple, you know, an extra match there, I guess, uh, under their belt that they have to deal with before they turn around here to Fiorentina. Uh, the Violas did play in that as well, but they only played one match. They lost in that semifinal. But the fact of the matter is, <clears throat> Inter Milan, I mean, one loss between Serie A and Champions League this, this year. Uh, on just three occasions out of those 27 combined matches between both of those competitions, have they allowed more than one goal? So their defense is just remarkable. 16 clean sheets out of 27 matches. Again, proving just to be one of the best teams in Europe right now. Fiorentina, I've highlighted them. You know, on when I, I put out the the every week I put out you know different tables on the leagues, and Fiorentina has been a sell team for me. And the reason for that is I think they're just overachieving their results quite a bit. They sit fourth in the table. Everything that you know I pay attention to and I look at for long term results, not it's not going to ever predict a game. You know, suggests they should not be in that top four position. In fact, expected points, which is as Kevin and I like to look at based on expected goal data, has them sitting eleventh. In the table of Syria, maybe not quite indicative, but I have this team like they kind of finish every year, maybe sixth, maybe seventh, right? right in, in the table, fourth, I don't think so. And and I think that their results may be, you know, over exaggerated too. You look at some of their their home results. You mentioned the schedule that they've only played one other top four team. It has been a very easy schedule at home thus far. They are six two and two there, and they should be rightfully so considering their opponents. Uh, they also have that embarrassing loss to Empoli. Uh, two nil, so they can lay an egg as well. And you know, I just don't believe that the bottom line is I just don't believe in Fiorentina being an actual solid team. And and, and Napoli made pretty good work of them in this in the Super Cup semifinal as well. Is just evidence of that. So 
I think this is a pretty straightforward inner win, and maybe it's not, but the price is too good at minus 110 for them just to get a win for me to pass up. So I, I feel like there's a lot of ways, you know, inner is going to get the job done. They have Lautaro Martinez back in the lineup after missing a couple matches and he hasn't missed a beat. He's just scoring goals at will hit the winner in the super cup final. So there's too many factors here. I like inner price is good. Uh, I don't think Fiorentina is a team that I, I believe in. So I like inner on a, on a simple win. I know you won't cheer for me, Carm, but <laughs> that's where I'm going. <laughs> That's it's all fine, Nick. And Paulo's final word for you on this one, but uh, I agree with Nick. I think Fiorentina's played above their heads. I think their schedule is eventually going to catch up to them. They sit in that fourth Champions League uh, spot on 34 points, but there's six teams, five below them. Uh, so with themselves included, six teams within three points of each other um, for that fourth spot. Uh, they're going to get leapfrogged at some point. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, you know, Fiorentina had a very easy schedule at home in the first half of the season. They only played, I believe, uh, Juventus out of all the big teams and they lost, actually. Um, so in the second half of the season, they're going to have to host, uh, starting with Inter, Milan, you know, all the other big teams. So um, <clears throat> I just don't see them getting anything from this match, uh, despite the fact that Inter Milan are coming off uh, a trip to Saudi Arabia for the Super Cup uh, you know, semifinals and finals. Um, I think this is a spot where Inter Milan can... Um, I don't think it's going to be an easy win, but I think the price is right. Uh, minus 113 to get uh, Inter Milan money line. You know, they won each of the last four matches in this venue. Um, they're unbeaten. Actually, no, they lost one of the last 16 matches against Fiorentina. Uh, they have nine wins, six draws, and that loss. And that loss, uh, if you look a little bit deeper, uh, that loss came uh, in April last season. Where into, it was sandwiched in between two matches um, uh, against Juventus. So Inter Milan were playing Juventus prior to that match. And then after that match to Fiorentina, they were playing in the Coppa Italia um, semifinals. So uh, they were a bit distracted. So take that loss with a grain of salt. Uh, if it wasn't for that Coppa Italia, um, that upcoming Coppa Italia semifinals, I think that they would have won. So Fiorentina don't have what it takes to beat the big ones. And um, Inter Milan have been nothing but, um, you know, sturdy, steady. They've given us no reason to doubt them. And um, I think they're going to get the job done here. So I don't want to complicate it. I, I was expecting, um, you know, Inter Milan's money line to be, uh, you know, at worse odds. But at minus 113, it's definitely worth the risk uh, for a team, you know, that's, um, you know, in high spirits after winning the, the Super Cup, um, they're leading the, the Serie A. Then actually, they're not leading the Serie A, but if they do win this match, they're going to be leading the Serie A. So I don't think they're going to, um, um, you know, be indifferent of the fact that Juventus slipped from them in the standings. Again, they have a, this match in hand or one match in hand. So a win here would temporarily push them at the top of the standings. And I just, you know, Fiorentina... As much as they, you know, if you look at the standings, they're fourth in, the, but uh, they're fourth in the standings. But as you said, Carmine, there's like three, four teams, five teams behind them, you know, within striking distance. And I think um, this will be a very anxious match for them. So give me Inter Milan man line minus one thirteen. I think the price is very, very good for this match. Uh, all right, uh, I like it, Pavlos. And before we get to the recap uh, uh, and lean and see what you guys have up on wager talk, Pavlos. Man, 2013, you absolutely destroyed soccer in 2013. You had a phenomenal year. You're the only guy I know who has his and her yachts uh, down <laughs> at the marina for the amount of money that you made last year betting European, South American, North American football. Tell us about this promo. Yeah, I actually, in 2023, uh, number which is, you know, which is pretty impressive. And we did most of our damage during the summer months. You know, we made over 100 units of profit uh, betting in the MLS, the Leagues Cup, Brazil, Copa Libertadores, you name it. And this is a heavy betting summer. We have the, uh, the 2024 Euros. We have the Copa America. We have, again, Leagues Cup in the MLS. We have Copa Libertadores. We have all kinds of competitions going live. And uh, you can get one year of all access. Uh, and again, this deal includes all soccer plays, futures, props, all 5% releases uh, for, for more than a dozen competitions uh, with guaranteed action, you know, throughout the calendar here with no dead months. So, um, you know, it's a great deal. Uh, we had a blast betting on soccer last season, again, especially in the summer. 
and uh, we're going to do it again. All right. Uh, Kev, let's uh, let's go through a quick recap. We'll have a look at the, your liens on the screen and uh, tell us what you have up at Wager Talk or what uh, clients can look forward to over the next three or four days. Yeah, all of our soccer client plays have been already posted for this weekend. Carmine, if you want to access them, pick up a three-day all-access pass or one heading into the weekend. Beyond that, just work on next week's EPL midweek card at the minute as well, which... I should have finished either tonight or tomorrow morning at the latest. So, uh, yeah, keep a check out for that. And, you know, it's going to be a, a busy weekend. All right. Good to uh, hear. Uh, Nick, let us know what you have up and we'll have a look at your liens as well. Sure. I uh, already mentioned the MLS golf combo promo, but again, that is 349 for both full seasons, uh, which is basically all of the rest of the calendar year because MLS goes through the beginning of December. And uh, right now I do have a 5% soccer play up going on Friday. Uh, only released seven of them since September. And uh, we're six and one. So hopefully we'll add another one. Been very selective with there. It's been working out. So hopefully we got another one. And that goes on uh, on Friday. Pablo, so you'll close it out. Uh, we'll have a look at your liens and uh, tell us what you have up or what clients can look forward to. Okay, we're running super hot right now, plus 19 units over the past week or so. And yesterday we had a blast hitting three or four correct scores in the uh, in the Afcon. So uh, I do have a, a Bundesliga best bet loaded for Saturday, and uh, we're number one in the Bundesliga so far in the season with plus 57.71 units, 61% uh, win rate, uh, 38 and 24. Um, so this is uh, probably my biggest play of the weekend. I do have. Uh, some free plays loaded at my page uh, from the Romanian league um, and uh, from the Copa del Rey tonight. And there's, you know, more of the plays will be loaded in that Saturday package. And of course, Sunday we got action as well. I still haven't decided yet, but um, uh, there's definitely going to be at least a couple. All right. Uh, guys, and for myself, uh, you can use code CARM75. CARM75 will get you 75 off a 30-day all-access. Great start to 2024. Um, we're making some money. Let's hope to continue it right through February and then right through to December. Uh, we're going to be back next uh, next Thursday. We're going to cover some of the Premier League games, uh, some of the other games of interest that are going on uh, during the weekend, and then Champions League the knockout stages are right around the corner. So for myself, Nick Borman, Kevin Dolan, and Pablo Sagretos, this is Stoppage Time. Thanks for tuning in, and good luck with your wagers. 